in Luke's account that we have of the time that Christ was tempted by Satan, there's that one time when Satan had taken Jesus up onto a high mountain and showed him all the nations of the world and said to Christ, All of these I'll give to you if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus' reply on that occasion was to say to Satan, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. Interesting, the use of that word serve there by Christ. There are at least three words in the Koine Greek language that are used in the New Testament of this idea of serving. There is, for instance, there's the word that's diakoneo, from which uh, related to the noun form diakonos, it's a word that means to minister to, to serve. The word diakonos, we know, that means servant. It's a word that sometimes is transliterated as deacon. And so, to use that word merely means to serve or to minister people as a deacon would do. And then the second word is the word duluo, to serve as a doulos, the doulos being a slave. So the idea of service there is you serve others as a slave would serve his master. But interestingly enough, the word that Jesus uses in this passage when he says to Satan, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve, is this word latruo. The meaning primarily of that word originally was simply to work for hire. And yet it came to be used of worship. And it came to be used of service rendered to God. And any time that word is used in the New Testament in regard to service, it always relates to service that we're to give to God. It's very likely to be akin to other words that are used in the New Testament for servant. For instance, there's the word pice that sometimes is translated simply as son or child. And yet, there's at least one time in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 18, where it's used of Jesus. God, in a prophecy made by Isaiah, tells us, God says, I have chosen him as my servant. And so that word is used of Jesus. In fact, William Barclay has out a book that was entitled, They Called Him Jesus. And it's a book that gives some 42 different titles that are used in the Bible of Jesus. Everything from saying that he is a shepherd, the door, he is a rock, he is the way, the truth, and the life. But Barclay says all 42 titles of Christ have to be understood in light of this one word that's used of Him, and that is that He is God's servant. Everything about Christ relates around that. And so Jesus talks about that we are to worship the Lord our God, and Him only shall we serve. And so that's the word that's being used here. And everybody serves something in all of creation. The mineral serves vegetable, the vegetable serves the lower animals, the lower animals serve man, and man is either going to serve God or Satan. You think about it, the minerals found in the soil that give life to plants to grow, and those plants are eaten by animals and gives them strength and ability to grow, but then those animals are used by us, sometimes for food to help us to grow and to be strong, but also used sometimes simply as beasts of burden to help man carry on the work that he needs to do. But man of all is the only one that has the choice to determine who he's going to serve. And as I said, we're either going to serve God or we're going to serve Satan. And you remember how that Joshua had called the people together in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15 and challenged them to choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. So man is given the choice to determine who he's going to serve in life. And I can tell you tonight that the master whom we should serve is the Lord our God. And that's what exactly Jesus is talking about here. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shalt thou serve. If God is not the master of our life, if we're not serving Him only, He's not our master in any respect. We've got to serve Him all our lives in all ways. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Jesus said, No man can serve two masters. For either he will love the one and hate the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. 
You cannot serve God and mammon. You've got to choose. And you can't choose two or three. You can only choose one as to who you're going to serve. In Deuteronomy 5, 7 and 8, God given His law to Moses said, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or is it on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. We've got to choose. And we can't choose anyone and be pleasing to God unless we choose Him fully and completely to be the one that we're going to serve. And it's altogether right that we should choose to serve God. And there are at least three reasons, I think, the Bible presents to us why we ought to choose to serve God. Number one, we ought to choose and serve God because He is the one who's created us. In the New Testament, in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, the text tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, with, was, was God. All things by Him were made, and apart from Him was not anything made that has been made. We need to choose to serve Him because He's the one that gave us life. He is the one who's created us. But second, we ought to choose to serve God simply because of the fact He's the one that sustains our life. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 talks about this, that He is the saint sustaining this world by the power of His Word. Not only did God create us, but God and His Son keeps this world going, and He keeps us going through the power of His Word. Just as He created it by the power of His Word, saying, let there be light, so also He sustains us in this life by the power of His Word. And then thirdly, we ought to serve Christ because... We're His by right of redemption. God created us in His image as His people. But man made a choice to serve Satan and go off into sin. And then God sent His Son to redeem us, to bring us back to Him, in order that we might be saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Paul said to those brethren there in Corinth, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? whose you are. And then he adds to that, by whom we've been redeemed. And in Acts chapter 20, when he talks to those elders from Ephesus, he makes mention of the fact that they are to take responsibility to oversee the flock, which he says he hath purchased with his own blood. And so we belong to God by right of creation, by right of the fact that he sustains us, and by right of the fact that he is the one who has redeemed us and made us his own. And therefore, we have an obligation to serve God. And God also is one who is our servant. Have you ever thought about that? We think about maybe our serving God, but have you ever thought about the fact that God is one who serves us? God made it possible for us to be able to live in the life. He causes nature to yield its bounty to us. You remember when Paul talked about how that Paul said, I have planted and Apollo has watered, but God gives the increase. That's true not only in the spiritual realm, but it's true in the physical world too. We can plant seed, we can water it, but it's only by the power of God that that seed will grow and produce fruit for us. And so God serves us in causing nature to yield its bounty to us. He also serves us through His angels, who according to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, are our ministering servants that have sent forth to minister to those who've been saved. And then also, God's only Son is a servant for us. Jesus said in Matthew 20 and verse 28, Just as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give His life a ransom for many. And we ought to serve Him as our Master and as our servant. As our Master, we need to realize He is not a harsh Master that drives, but He is the one that leads us. And so Jesus said in John chapter 10, the latter part of verse 3, And the sheep, he says, hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He doesn't drive, he leads. And that's another reason why we ought to accept him as our master, to be the one that we're going to serve, because he leads us. He has that love for us. And later on in that chapter, Jesus identifies what he's talking about when he says to those people, I am the good shepherd. And so He's the one that leads us. We ought to serve Him. We ought to serve Him because of the fact that He gives us more than we deserve. I know you've probably heard people say sometime when they're asked the question, how are you doing? And sometimes they'll respond by saying, 
much better than I deserve. And we need to realize that God in His service to us serves us much better than we deserve. Paul talks about this in Romans 6 and 23 when he says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All of us, by our actions, by the sins we've committed, deserve to be paid with death. But God doesn't give us that. Through His mercy and grace, by the gift of His Son Jesus, He gives to us eternal life. Are you a servant of Christ tonight? You and you alone have the ability to choose whom you're going to serve. Whether you're going to serve God or whether you're going to serve Satan. If you're not his servant, then I would beg of you to make serious consideration this night to do what you need to do to become his child, to become his servant in this life. By your faith in Jesus as the Son of God, your repentance of your sins and confessing him before men, you can be buried with Christ in baptism. To have all of your past sins washed away, to be added to His kingdom, to become His child, and to live as His servant. And He is the one who serves you. If you're His child, but you haven't been living faithful to Him, then I would encourage you tonight to repent of those sins and make things right with God by turning from those sins and seeking His forgiveness. Acts chapter 8 and verse 22, the very thing that Peter told Simon the sorcerer to do, a man who had believed in Christ, who was baptized, became God's child, and later sinned, is told, Repent of this, thy wickedness, and pray to God, that perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Whatever may be your need, we would encourage you tonight to respond in obedience to God's will, either in becoming His child or being restored to Him as a child if you've erred, in order that you might truly serve Him in this life effectively as you should and be served by Christ as your Savior. If you need to respond to Him tonight in any way, we encourage you to come together while we stand and while we sing.